If you look at the right part of the sky, you have a chance to see something that won't happen again in our lifetimes. That green comet we've been talking about, it's now visible until the end of the month, but it's something more than a once in a lifetime event. You could think of it as once in a humankind happening. The last time this green comet passed Earth, was 50,000 years ago. So that's the time of Neanderthals and woolly mammoths and saber-toothed tigers. It is a celestial event that is generating a whole lot of interest, and that means it's time to spend some time with Bob McDonald, who's the host of Quirks and Quarks on CBC Radio 1. He's in Victoria up super early because this is a special <laughs> occasion. Welcome back. Glad to see you, Bob. Good morning, Heather. I was actually looking for the car walking here to the studio this morning because this is the best time to see it just before dawn and uh and, 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 and did it's you spot it yeah. Nah, Tazy here, unfortunately. Oh, I can't shoot. see any stars, so I haven't spotted it yet. <laughs> okay, well, there's such intrigue around this comet. Why is it so interesting? Well, what's interesting about this one is that it has come from very, very far away, a region called the Oort Cloud, which is a cloud of icy objects that completely surrounds our solar system. It's way out beyond the planets. It's past Neptune. And this, this cloud is made of leftover ices and, and rock and dust and dirt from the original cloud that our whole solar system was made. Because we, we came from this giant cloud of gas and dust. You know those colorful pictures we see from the Hubble telescope and now the Webb telescope of those clouds in space? Yes. We used to look like that. And these clouds, they condense down and a lot of the material goes into the center, becomes the sun, and then the other stuff becomes planets. But there's stuff left over. And that's what's left out there at the these end. These are leftovers? It's, it's kind of, yeah, they're leftovers. It's sort of like if you're uh, if you're making a, a pie, you know, and you get your your dough or your flour and all that stuff, and you make your nice ball of dough on the table, and then there's all the stuff left around the edges that you don't use. That's what this is. So it's very very old. It's very old material. It's primitive. It's it's more than four and a half billion years old. And every now and then, one of these little ice balls gets knocked out of its position, and it comes down in towards the sun and visits us. So this is like a free space mission. It's coming to us, goes around the sun, and then goes back out again. And this particular one takes, as you say, 50,000 years to do that, to go into the sun and come back out again. So it's been a long time so that's since a it huge was here orbit. last. Huge and it'll be 50,000 years before, before it comes back. back. Yeah. So that's partly why it's special, but this one's also interesting because it's green. Now, why is that? <laughs> well, that turns out to, to be one of the ingredients on the comet. There's carbon there, and uh, there's a, it's called the di it's two molecules of carbon that are together and when ultraviolet light from the sun hits it they split apart and give off green light and this is how we study comets we look at their color we look at the the tail behind the comet which is dust and debris that's coming off it because comets are made mostly of ice and as they get closer to the sun that ice turns into a gas and the dust is released and it, and it forms this long tail and with our telescopes and spectroscopes we can look at what that stuff's made of and again, we're seeing the ingredients. So carbon, that's kind of exciting because we're made of carbon. And so it's, it's not to say the, the comet's alive, but at least the ingredients, some of the ingredients for life are out there. So it's, it's looking back in time. It, it's a time capsule from very, very far away, and that's why they're so interesting. So that's what we learn about comets. We talk about that, but the fact about this 50,000, I, I, I'll, I'll get to how people can see this for themselves, but it's just so interesting to just even contemplate 50,000 years ago. The last time it swung mm -hmm. by, what was it like here, Bob? Well, it was during the Ice Age. It was the Ice Age, and there were two species of humans on Earth, and it's hard for us to get around that, because now, you know, there's only one kind of human, the Homo sapiens, that's us, that's you and me, but there were Neanderthals as well. They were just coming to the end of their existence. The, the population by that time was pretty small. Most of them were living in southern Europe, uh, around Gibraltar. We know there's a cave in Gibraltar, which is one of their last refuges, but there were. There, there was more than one species of human around, which is a, an interesting time. So what's it going to be like 50 thousand years from now when this comet comes back will we still be here or will there be another species of human to replace us i know that's interesting to think the about. mind boggles yes okay so get out your trusty tools and anyone listening yeah, to our like conversation it. you said you were you were looking to see in the sky uh it right, right. now is at the closest point which is still 41 million kilometers away which is astounding to me but right now it's at mm -hmm. its closest point but it is still going to be visible for the foreseeable future how do people see it <laughs> 
40 million kilometers, that's nothing in astronomical terms, Heather. <laughs> Come on. The, the sun's 150 million kilometers away, so it's really, really close. It, it, it's, it's quite close. So what you do, you go outside and look north. First of all, you need a really dark sky. You can't see it from a city. So you have to be away from the city in and have a good, clear, dark sky. So it's got to be a clear winter night, which means it's going to be a cold night, so dress warmly. And look north. And, and if you can, try to find the Big Dipper. I think most people can find the Big Dipper. I've tried to draw it for you here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh -huh. But it'll be sort of on its edge uh, on like that and you use the end star of the big dipper to find the north star our, our north star and then the comet is just above that so that's okay, so it's, look if you can sky, find the north star dipper on just the look right around. north star from that that's right and then and then just look for a green smudge it's going to be really subtle it, it's not obvious it's very very subtle there's a very good chance you could miss it because it's so dim it's not but a if, you if you're thinking like some blazing green streak it's not like that at all is it no no not at all not like comets we've had in the past we had one called neowise that came through in 2020 2020 and you could look just look right at it and see it but this one is really really dim uh, but so if you have binoculars that's better and slowly slowly just scan that area of sky and and, and if you see it, it it'll catch it and you, you just see a green smudge it's it's not clear because there's a cloud of stuff around it that's what you're looking at is all the stuff coming off so you don't actually see the comet itself otherwise go to websites there are a lot of telescopes that are looking at this right now and there are uh, like space.com is a good place to go and they have uh, webcams they have chats about it and you can see it that way and get a good image as well well you know a york university had a live stream and we've been showing some pictures from a nova yeah. scotia photographer who's been up taking some shots mm -hmm. as well we've been looking at some of those from yarmouth can you just hold up that picture again because i just think that's extraordinary here we are in the area in the era of chat gpt <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and we got low tech Bob here with the hand drawn are, article. I just think this is fantastic. <laughs> I love your pops. Sorry, Heather. All right, thank you for coming. I'm always happy to see you. See you next always time. Always a pleasure, Heather. Thank All you. Right. Bye bye. Thanks, Bob.